even secularists, even atheists, even leftists have their own religious ideas that they are foisting on other people. They just don't happen to, to know it. How do you deal with what seems to me to be a contradictory ideology that we, you talked about, you know, how a lot of powers enumerated in the Constitution have been um, given to the federal government that weren't given to the federal government, how the states have lost power, how even I would say some of the federal offices have gained power that they were never supposed to have originally in the text of the document. With, but the text of that document, one could argue, does talk about keeping religion separate from state, especially I know Thomas Jefferson, I'm not quite as sure about the other founding fathers, and I don't wanna speak out of information I don't have, was very virulent about making sure that um, there would never be an America with like a government enforced religion. So I was wondering how you handle that mm -hmm. dichotomy and if what like conservatism really is if you wanted to, not like, cause that's a straw man concept, but sure. I meant more if you wanted to say to liberals or to people who wanna be moderate conservatives or just what you would say about bringing together the country yeah. in moderation in general or you know, mm -hmm. sliding to different scales or being open to new opinions, how you unite those two very disparate ideas so of the, telling the, people what to do but giving people the power to do what they want, like sure. with their money and taxes. Sure. You're, you're asking, I think, really the, one of the ancient questions about, like, free will and grace. And, and so we won't be able to get into that topic, but we can get into the role of religion in America, which is people really misunderstand the role of religion in America. You mentioned Thomas Jefferson. When he ran for president, he was called by his opponents a howling atheist. He was one of the more antithetical to religion, though he did, he did uh, come up with a translation of the Bible, but it wasn't a great translation. So anyway, we can leave that be. Uh, what the Constitution says is not that we will not have religion in America. What the Constitution says is that there will not be an established church according to the federal government. So there won't be one church that the federal government recognizes. State governments could have established churches, but the federal government could not because there, there are different powers, as you just mentioned. What one has to acknowledge before we even start discussing the Constitution or start discussing our country is that it is founded on fundamentally religious premises. We are given natural rights. Okay, we have these natural rights. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. I might be able to get the Democratic nomination for president because I could say that and Joe Biden couldn't. <laughs> We, we're, we're endowed by our creator. And uh, so the, the founding fathers, in the very per first document, the heart and soul of the country, are acknowledging God. We have God on our currency, one nation under God. We began sessions, of, we, we still begin sessions of Congress with prayer. Uh, the country is religious. John Adams, second president of the United States, said the country is built for a moral and religious people. It's wholly unfit to the governance of any others. And there's a, a revisionist view now that all the founding fathers were atheists or something. It, it simply was not true. And it cannot be true because all governments must have religious premises. As uh, St. Andrew Breitbart, the patron of Hollywood conservatives once said, politics is downstream of culture, but culture is downstream of religion. Uh, cult and culture come from the same root word. What a culture worships will define that culture. And so I know. I think now we tr the modern left tries to pretend they don't have a religion, right? So they say, no, we're totally neutral. We take no stand whatsoever. But also, men can be women. But we take no stand. And what they're saying, they're, usually the secular left is not very uh, religiously literate. But just to use that one example, this gender theory, the idea that my body... My physical body has nothing to do with who I am. That actually, I look like a man, right? But if deep down I feel like a woman, then, then I am a woman and my body has nothing to do with that. And I actually have to change my body, mutilate my body to look more like a woman. That is an ancient religion. It's an ancient heresy called Gnostic dualism. Got rejected by the church a long time ago, but these bad ideas keep cropping back up and back up. I, I don't even mean to focus just on transgenderism. I use it to show that even secularists, even atheists, even leftists have their own religious ideas that they are foisting on other people. They just don't happen to, to know it. And so part of what politics is about is persuading one another, coming together, having a, some common reverence for the country, having some unity to one another, and figuring out what it is we believe. Because all laws 
are going to relate to our view of morality. It is impossible not to legislate morality. And so uh, if you've got half the country who's not even admitting that they're playing the game, it's very difficult to do that. But uh, if, if they would acknowledge it, I think, then we could have a mature conversation. We might even start to agree on something. 